Welcome to Virtualize Everything. Today's video is going to be maybe a little bit different than some of the other ones we do. We don't have a tutorial or really a general point of our discussion. But what I did is starting yesterday, I downloaded every single image and I say every single image, the latest version of every single image inside of the LXD website for images. And then I proceeded to try to install them or create them, however you want to call it, inside of Proxmox. I used both the command line tool and the web interface tool, and I've compiled a list of what worked, what didn't work, and what maybe had a little bit of a problem. So let's head over here to my desktop and take a look here. So here on this side of the screen is a complete list of what worked and what didn't work. The name, the version number that was available, or the version name, regard one or the other, that was available, whether it installed or not, and we actually should have that there. And you can notice that every single thing installed in one way or another, then whether it installed with a web tool, and note that if it did install with the web tool, I didn't try to do it in command line. Then whether or not it installed with the command line, and whether or not it booted. So some of these, like Fedora, actually failed, so they wouldn't boot, they gave me an error message, they just didn't load up. Some of these booted with an error message that uh, this C group V2 wasn't supported, and some of them booted with no error message, but refused to give me a login screen. Now over here is more of a little bit of a graphical representation, so the ones that did boot, I turned off, and so what we're left with here is kind of a graphical display of everything running. I also want to point out that there's well over 20 images or containers running here on a Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig at the same time. Now, this may or may not be impressive to some of you, and I've never tried a feat like this with an x86 system. And I can say to you that it looks pretty impressive to me to see all of these. None of them have any real workload that they're performing here. They've all just been booted to a login screen to see if they were functioning to generate this spreadsheet. But I I was pretty impressed. The last thing I want to do is a brief little call out and if you have any other sources of images that are available for LXD and Proxmox in general in either the ARM or in x86, I'd like to know, to know about them. And this list is here just for ARM. So you can see that like we don't have turnkey and stuff in here that we would have available for us on an x86 system because these are all ARM images. Anyways, so I hope you enjoyed this information and find it useful full in your projects. So I'm here just editing and I noticed this video was quite short and I also didn't explain what we did to actually make these run in the command line. So um, if any of you were trying to recreate the process and hadn't followed any of my documentation on OpenWRT, which if you noticed didn't work, um, and was f the documentation was for x86, it would be hard for you to understand how to do it. So here, let's take a look at how we actually use the command line to get these to boot and the command that was used. So I'm just going to open up the shell here and I'm pressing the up arrow and you can see the last container that I tried to get running. So what we did is use the PCT command to create a container. So that's the first two words you see. And then the next one is the container number and the path to the image in this case uh, void Linux. And then we 
we state the architecture, which is ARM64, because we are here on Pimox. Then we state the host name, the root FS location, which in our case is the only storage drive here on this particular machine, and it's called local. Again, the container number, so this will kind of specify the image file that everything's going into. The memory amount, we're just specifying the base minimum suggested by Proxmox of 512. And again, one CPU core. The OS type, which is labeled unmanaged, and then the that it's an unprivileged container by specifying the one. Now, when you use the web interface tool, it's going to try to identify what OS it is and set up a particular process. So because it failed on the web tool, we're basically trying to use the command line to force this product process. And it, if we had a specified OS type, in the system that was compatible with Proxmox, we it would have been successful in most cases on the web interface. So we just tried unmanaged here, basically to force this like and make it work. Now, could we spend some more time maybe playing with some of these and trying different similar OS types? Yes, possibly we could, and possibly that might make some of these boot. But in the past when I've tried that, I've had like no success with that happening, even though I could see it happening. So that's where we're at. Now, I'm not going to take you through the web interface process because I'm sure by now you guys know how to do that. And if you don't, drop a comment below and I'll point you to a video that shows you or just go ahead and search the internet. There's plenty of other videos. Um, anyways, I'm going to leave this video off here. And I hope you have a good night. And please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Also, drop a comment if you have any other sources other than the LXD image repository or LXD or LXC images that are ARM64. As always, have a good night.